And yet Jesus said to him, if you can believe everything. Now, I find this a tremendous statement. It's all encompassing. All things are possible to him who, who will believe. I find this is a tremendous challenge to the church because it was not only a challenge to the boy's father, but at this point it was a challenge to the disciples themselves who were there listening and part of the conversation. And I want to challenge Christians in the church today. I want to challenge every one of you that's listening to me on this very issue. Our God is a God of miracles, and nothing is impossible with God. And I've literally had to take this up. And in fact, I would say that one part of my ministry, I, I, I sometimes I don't see myself just as an evangelist. I'm certainly not a healing evangelist. I see part of my life has been to prove that God is the God of the impossible. Because things that I've seen have literally been part of that. I mean, it all goes back to when in 1961, as most of you will know if you don't, <laughs> in 1961, I wanted to go to Jerusalem, didn't have the money to go to that conference which was being held in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost for the first time in 2000 years. And I said, well, if I can't fly, I don't have the money, I'll drive by car, which I did. But the thing is that in order to do it, I had to test this very issue with God that nothing was impossible. Because all the time people said, you can't do it, you can't go, you can't go behind the Iron Curtain. When you get into Israel, you can't get out. They threw everything at me. But I stood on this that even though the question of being the first person, and I was the first in the world, to drive all the way from England to Jerusalem and back, that nothing was impossible. Because I, I, I sense this, and there's something more in this than just faith. I'm trying to show you the reality of God. The reality of God is that nothing is impossible. God is so great, so powerful, all, all wisdom, all might, all power, all knowledge, and everything is in the hands of God. With God, nothing is impossible. Verse 24, what was the reaction? Well, straight away, the father of the boy cried out and said, crying, it says, with tears, Lord, I do believe, but help my unbelief. Do you know, I've got a sense sometimes that the church is going to have to respond in this way, because so much could happen today in the church if we had the faith to go out and do it. But people don't understand faith. Faith is the action. Faith is seeing the impossible and going out and doing it. And you know what happened. You know that the evil spirit came out and, and, and Jesus healed him. And, and of course, Later on, the disciples came to him and said, why couldn't we do this? Why couldn't we cast out this spirit? And in verse 29, he said to them, this kind can come forth by nothing but prayer and fasting. And, you know, people don't actually see the connection. And I think this is probably one of the things that demonstrates my ministry and has been a an outstanding feature of my ministry is the fact that faith sometimes has to have prayer and fasting to make it possible. I try and quote the fact that on both times when I had cancer, both with the throat cancer and with the lung cancer, it didn't happen quickly. In both occasions, it was three months, three months of prayer and fasting why? For the impossible to happen. 
And it isn't just faith. It, that faith comes by hearing, faith comes by, by acting. Faith, yes, but it has to be linked to prayer and fasting to build that faith. Faith isn't just something that comes out of the air.